She's back! After an illustrious four-year career as a player at BU, including a 2003 Americas Championship and a trip to the NCAA Tournament, the Terrier forward has returned. Marissa Mosley was named the eighth head coach in BU women's basketball history. Joined now with Marissa Mosley, and Marissa, can I start or end the rest of this interview now calling you coach? Can we get to that point? Yeah, I'm, I haven't decided what I'm going to have the players call me yet, because it's Still, I'm wrapping my head around it, but um, you definitely can call me coach, that's fine. <laughs> well, coach, let me be the first to say that here. How good does it feel to be to be home back in Boston? It's amazing. I, you know, I kind of tried to envision it these last couple days as, as it became um, real that I was going to be named the coach, but today has really, it hasn't totally sunk in yet because I've had a lot going on, um, but it's as I was sitting in the office and I'm getting phone calls and, I'm, and people are asking me about decisions, 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 now I feel like, okay, I'm, I'm the head coach now because that's what I know I have to do. It's funny you mentioned decisions because taking this opportunity is a life decision. Coming to BU is a life decision. What was it about this opportunity that you said, I I'm jumping forward to be the head coach of the Terriers? I think it was just the timing felt right. You know, I'd been at UConn for nine years. Um, I had an unbelievable experience there, things I could never have dreamed of. And when this opportunity presented itself, um, I obviously, BU has a really special place in my heart. It's where I got started. Um, and I just felt like, you know, the program at this time and where I was in my career, it just felt like it was a, a match made in heaven. Well, we can take a little trip down memory lane because wherever you've gone, winning seemed to have followed. And I was hoping to see if you can remember what it felt like when you were a player to win the 2003 Marrakeesh Championship, getting your first appearance in the NCAA tournament. And then on top of that, now you've won five national championships with UConn. What was that first one like comparatively? So yeah, I mean, I think there's nothing that compares to it, especially when you're the, the player. Um, even though, you know, when I got hired, Coach Jerem was like, have you ever won a national championship? I was like, I won a conference championship. <laughs> like, uh, no, I have not. Um, but his point was like, that's why he keeps doing it because, you know, every year there's a new either assistant coach if they hire someone new, which they don't do that often, or um, a freshman class who hasn't. So for me now coming here, it's kind of cool to be able to say, hey, we could have an opportunity to go back to the NCAA tournament and that would be your first time of winning a conference championship. Um, comparatively, obviously winning five national championships, there's also nothing like that. The very first time that I did it, um, I was so nervous because it was my scout for the championship game and the score was 20 to 12. We were down against Stanford. We scored 12 points and I'm like, ah, this is going to be like my fault. It's my first time. But um, fortunately, we had Maya Moore and Tina Charles and they took care of some things and the second half we won and the rest is history. So you can't give us an insight as to what, what adjustment you made in that game that made the difference, huh? I stopped <laughs> suggesting. That was the adjustment we had. I stopped suggesting and I let him, who's a legend, to do what he does. <laughs> well, I'm glad you brought up Gino Ariema because, you know, getting the chance to work side by side with that man who's really become, you know, the face of college basketball or women's college basketball. What was it or something that he's taught you or a technique that's something you'll use in your coaching career going forward? I think probably the biggest thing is, well, there's two things. One is to be authentic, be true to yourself um, because you can't sell something that you don't believe in. Um, so whether it's us as assistant coaches or him, we have to be able to sell the, that product and get kids to buy into it so if we are put on airs or, or act different in the recruiting process and then come back and the kids are like oh that's not how you were when you recruited me so just really stay true to yourself um, and be really authentic that's one thing but the second thing is give people the space um, to grow and learn um, within your staff and your team so you have to give them a lot of you can't be a micromanager you got to give them a lot of opportunity to take whatever challenge or whatever assignment you give them and run with it and I think been doing that he allowed me to be prepared for this position. Have you already been working on your sales pitch now for recruits to come to Boston? Usually the city is a, is a very helpful tool. The city is a great tool. Obviously the academics are a great tool. I'm a great tool. <laughs> um, no, but I think, you know, we talked about in the, the press conference today, I am an alum. I think that's a huge um, selling point. I, I chose to come back here again. I chose twice. So I feel obviously that's a pretty strong endorsement of the place. But um, on top of that, I think um, what we have the potential to do here, I think we'll, we'll sell kids on it. I realize you've, you've been a 
here for now 24 hours, so I apologize for a loaded question, but what kind of expectations are you setting on yourself and any player that comes in as part of the women's basketball? You told me these were going to not be like that tough. Well, I said there was more. You know, there was more <laughs> we were going to throw in there. <laughs> um, no, I think the expectations, um, I want us to be um, realistic with ourselves, and I, at the same time, I want, you know, and I, I did probably put out like a target today when I was like, we're going to win every single year. <laughs> My sister already let me know that that was like, wow, okay, lofty goal. Um, but hey, that is what a Dream goal big. is, right? You right. gotta put it out there and you know, um, speak into existence. But I think um, first, I want to talk to my players and I want to find out for them, like, what is it that they're committing themselves to do? Because I can sit down and say these are the goals I have, but if they're not bought into it, it's not going to happen. So I think we've already talked a little bit um, yesterday in our first official team meeting, unofficial team meeting, um, just kind of kind of get from them. We're going to sit down and have more discussions and really talk about what are you willing to put into this because ultimately I can try to put you in a position to win, but you have to go out and do it. I wanted to ask you about that first team meeting. What was the response? You know, normally it's, it's a new coach. They know, you know everything's going to be different. What was their response when you were able to walk in and talk to them? I think they were excited. I mean, I think I was really um, pleasantly surprised. They they said they weren't disappointed at all with the selection, so that was a good, that was the first good step. Um, but I think also um, there's an excitement, you know, change is hard and um, and any time that change happens, I think there's a lot of questions about how you're going to be or whatever on um, the case. I try, as I said, to be authentic. This is who I am. This is who I'm you know, going to get every day. Um, I want to build relationships with them and we can talk about technical stuff and how we're going to you know, what we're going to do in practice and all that, but at the core of it, we're all people and we need to really get into a position where we feel great working with one another and then after that, the rest will come. I just want to compliment you. You've led perfectly into my next question every single time. So the transitions perfect. are there. This, this yeah. is going really well. It's my one year at ESPN. Oh, so. perfect. You, you knew exactly <laughs> what was coming because I did want to ask you about, you know, as a player, you were known as a defensive specialist, third all time in blocks at BU. Uh, how much of that defensive intensity are we expecting to see from this BU team going forward and how much is that a part of your regiment from your team? Yeah, so um, it's funny when I uh, I was like you know, defensive specialist, um, <laughs> which means I didn't score a lot of points. So that's one way, you know, just a euphemism. But um, but they needed me on the court because we had to get stops. Um, but no, in all actuality, it was um, I think I always was told and it was preached like defense wins championships, that old adage. But I think at the end of the day, being at Connecticut. What I learned is offense actually wins championships. You have to get stops, but if you can't score, you can't win. So um, what I appreciate is that I have always been very defensive centric, but going to UConn and being there for nine years, he's a master when it comes to offensive um, schemes and changing with what, whatever you have available to you. So instead of like, this is just what we do and you just plug kids into it, we're always kind of tinkering with our offense and figuring out what's going to work best for that individual team. Um, so in that way, I feel like I'm going to try to have a good mix. Obviously, I want to get after it and we want to get stops and we led the country in steals when I was here um, my junior year. But at the same time, I think if we can't put the ball in the basket, um, we won't win and nobody wants to watch that. Nobody <laughs> wants to see a game that's like, you know, 50 to 49. No one's looking to see that. So I think to get some buzz and excitement, we've got to be able to put the ball in the basket. For you, playing as one of the, the forwards on the BU team and certainly when at UConn as an assistant really uh, recruiting and helping to develop that, uh, how much is having kind of a, a main a center a part of your offense or is it something that it's, as it comes you're going to be able to adapt based on the players you recruit? Yeah, I think the way that the game has changed, um, players these days are a lot more versatile. So there isn't a true center anymore. I mean, there's a few kids. If you get a kid who's 6'7", then she's probably going to be a center. Um, if she wants to step out and shoot threes, she still wants to. You she know still that. wants yeah. to, and she can be Dirk Nowitzki, but she better get in and get some rebounds too. That's all I'm saying. Um, <laughs> But no, I think honestly, um, I like kids who are versatile. They can play inside, outside. I think that makes it a lot tougher for matchups and all of that um, when you're going against opponents. And um, so the ability, every player has to at least be able to make a 15 footer, even if they're um, a post player. And then obviously my guards can step out. And by their by their senior year, I want our, our bigs to be able to step out and shoot threes too. Because again, it's just another thing to add to their arsenal. Coach, I wanted to ask you, I thought one of the most interesting notes when I was reading and doing research for this interview was that you are now the fourth active Terrier head coach that is an alum of BU. And maybe I'm a sentimentalist, but I just thought that said something about BU athletics and the idea of, of coming home. What, what did that mean to you? Yeah, I mean, I, I just saw Leslie um, before when we came down here, and I think 
you know, that's, I told her it's kind of cool to be part of this little sorority fraternity kind of culture. Um, not that we're trying to be a cult, <laughs> but um, I think that it's... Um, There's that ESPN sticking back in there yeah, again, helping right, yeah, watch yeah. Choose Your Words wisely, right? Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. We're not a cult here. Um, but no, I think, you know, to be... Uh, for, for Drew and the entire athletic department and the university to think enough of me to come to, to welcome me back. Um, it is unique and at the same time I feel like um, just in the last two days being back on campus and, and everything comes you know rushing back to you and, and yet the university has grown and expanded so much. Um, I'm just I'm really honored to kind of be a part of that, 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 that group as it were. Coach, I have a feeling we'll be discussing a lot more in terms of X's and O's as the season goes along, but enjoy this time and welcome home. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.